Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about Adam-12. I want to talk about the first ever episode of Adam-12, also known as The Pilot. We'll talk all about it and talk to you about what I believe is probably one of the best and most iconic scenes of the entire show. I want to reminisce about the episode just a little bit, as well as give you some of the good trivia about the episode, revealing some of what code they mentioned in the episode. Let me know if you've seen this one. Let's get right to it. The episode is called Log One, The Impossible Mission. Now, it aired September 21st, 1968. Now, in this one, Malloy plans to resign at the end of the shift. Why? Well, unfortunately, the death of his partner had been haunting him. It's something that he had been struggling with for so long. But today, he's assigned a new rookie partner, Reed. This is where Malloy and Reed first meet. And Malloy decides the green Reed is worthy of his efforts to train him, leading Malloy to stay on the job. Now, I'm not a police officer or anything like that, but I know that some of you may want to know who are not in law enforcement or in any regard to the field. So I want to reveal to you some things. Whenever they mention code two, that means that they, something is urgent, but not to use lights and sirens. Also, whenever they mention five excuse me, 415 or 415, that is a disturbance. Now, the scene that I want to talk about, which I think is the most poignant scene in the whole series, or even in this episode, I wanna know your thoughts down below, is when Reed, who's a rookie in this case, asked his superior, Malloy, you want me to drive? And it's such a genius scene. Now, this is written and directed by Jack Webb, the creator of the show, the director, the writer, all of the above. Now, what is so important with this scene when he says, you want me to drive? Well, Malloy responds with, do you know what this is? And Reed answers, yes, sir, it's a police car. Now, Malloy gives this monologue of an amazing description of what the car is to him and what the car is probably for every police officer. It's not just a car, it's life insurance. It's his and his partner's safety. And he says, this black and white patrol car has an overhead valve V8 engine that develops 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It accelerates from zero to 60 in seven seconds. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour. It's equipped with a multi-channel DFE radio and electronic siren capable of emitting three variables, whale, yelp, and alert. It also serves as an outside radio speaker and a public address. The automobile has two shotgun racks, one attached to the bottom portion of the front seat, one in the vehicle trunk. Attached to the middle of the dash, illuminated by a single light bulb, is a hot sheet desk, fastened to which you are always to make sure is the latest one-off of the teletype before you ever roll. And the camera goes to Reed and he says, yes, sir. Miller responds, while looking at the car, while looking at the lights and sirens, it's your life insurance and mine. You take care of it, it'll take care of you. To me, that defines the whole show. It defines, in fact, what a police officer believes the car is. Because remember, police officers can hide behind the car when they're under fire. It gets them to different locations. It takes the criminals in the back to the jail and so forth. I mean, without the police car, Yes, there is a police officer, but it makes the job so much easier. And it's, again, it's it's like the rolling house. It's the rolling safety net. And I think it's wonderful. But Reed, even so, answers, yes, sir, you want me to drive? And then there's just a blank stare from Malloy. And Reed just nods his head, no. And it's perfect. This sets the stage for the show. Whenever we see that Reed is in the car, Malloy is always driving, pretty much, unless there's an extenuating circumstance, unless there's something a little bit unusual. But then again, this sets the precedence for the show and everything that's about to happen. The superior guy, the guy with more experience, is the guy who gets to drive the vehicle that keeps him alive, essentially. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty awesome. I wanna know your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me that this is the most iconic scene of the episode? 
or of the whole show, let me know what you believe is the most iconic scene, whether it's this one or another one. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. It's a good look at this episode. Again, this wasn't an in-depth look at this episode. Just a quick look at this scene. I know a lot of you want to see more Adam-12, so let's get to it. Let's bring you more of the show. We'll see you all next time, and don't forget, be hopeful. Thank you so much to all my supporters, especially my Diamond Tier patrons. Jerry D, Citizen Kane 359, Jennifer P, David D, Kevin K, Sally Ann, and Vito L. If you wanna be on this list, make sure to check out my Patreon description in the link below. Thank you so much again.